Muslim, black, Ethiopian woman. These are some of the words that both I and society would use to describe me. And as a Muslim, black, Ethiopian woman, I have been subject to numerous inaccurate and often hurtful stereotypes. Stereotypes that far too often dominate the media, which only worsens the situation. I've lost count of the number of times where I felt directly attacked for the person I am or the people I represent. I can still recall the shocked and confused look on my sports instructor's face when I told him that I really wanted to be part of the basketball team, which was mostly guys. There have been times where I felt unable to respond or defend myself simply because I did not know how or where to begin. I did not know that I had the voice or the opportunity to speak out. Sorry, last moment. <laughs> I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you here tonight, have had similar experiences. And these experiences lead to severe and violent consequences in settings such as schools, workplaces, and society at large. There is a severe lack of communication and mutual understanding, and that leads to the dominance of a particular story over its less vocalized alternatives. A story that becomes the go-to for a place a people, or a culture. It then becomes almost impossible to break away from that stagnant, unmoving narrative and claim one's own identity. Now, identity is a complex concept, but its basic definition is the state of being who or what a person is. Identity is also fluid in that you wouldn't always describe yourself the same way. Our thoughts, our interests, and our beliefs are some of the things that are constantly changing, and they all have an effect on who we are and how we see ourselves. So, how do stories tie with our identities? Stories are ways by which we communicate with one another, and they can exist in forms such as oral traditions, novels, books, blogs, news reports, articles, you name it. They are all narratives that give us an insight into a person's thoughts, actions, and decisions. By engaging with different stories, we eventually construct images of ourselves, of our communities, and of the world we live in. However, not all stories are told, and not all stories are heard. In our efforts to tell our stories, we are confronted with the obstacle of a skewed and selective narrative. One example of a skewed and selective narrative is that of Africa. Now, the media knows Africa as poor, disease-ridden, hunger-stricken, rampant with civil wars and armies of child soldiers. It was very easy for me to find these headlines. And although this has some truth to it, we do not hear enough of the good news that flows from the continent every day. When you leave here, I would like all of you to do something. Type in news from Africa on Google. And I guarantee you, at least the first 10 hits would either be about poverty, disease, war, or something of that sort. We do not hear enough about technological advancements, economic progress, and youth initiatives. The image you see on the top right corner is uh, the logo for Tiwale. It's a youth-led grassroots microfinancing organization that supports female entrepreneurs in Malawi. Because we do not hear enough stories like Tiwale, we have allowed stereotypes about Africa and about Africans to form and remain unchallenged. But as far as I'm concerned, Africa's story is yet to be told the right way. Two years ago, I attended the African Leadership Academy, a boarding school in South Africa where I met brilliant and talented people from Africa as well as the rest of the world. And as part of the entrepreneurial leadership program, I teamed up with two of my friends, and with the hopes of tackling the problems I mentioned, we co-founded Pan Africa, an organization that seeks to promote storytelling in order to encourage and enable people to share their own stories. Now, this is Ikari. Ikari is an eight-year-old Malawian, and with her family, she travels all across the African continent. And during her travels, she meets new people discovers new things, and experiences new cultures. 
Ikari is also the lead character of Pan Africa's current project, which is the Ikari Children's Book Series. And this is the first installation of the 55 books we hope to write, each book covering one African country. One of my favorite things about the Ikari book series is that from her every destination, Ikari takes with her a piece of fabric that is strongly identified with the place. And with the help of her grandmother, she threads it on to, a, to make a quilt or a large cloth. And she adds more and more pieces as she travels to new places. The quilt therefore becomes a physical representation of all the things she has learned and the memories she has made. So right about now you might be wondering, what does a children's book have to do with creating a more nuanced narrative of Africa? Children, including, th including those who live within Africa, who are constantly exposed to negative images, grow up with a very inaccurate notion of the continent. Changing their mindsets for the better allows us to create a future generation that is more informed. And I'm sure we can all agree that that is a good thing. Working on the Ikari book project has allowed me to really push my thinking in terms of the power of stories. Stories from the very fabric of who we are, and they are essential components of our identities. In an age when information is so readily available to us, it has become so much easier to share our stories. Social networks are one very good example of that. We hear 10 different versions of one single event, and that can either increase your knowledge about it, or it can increase your bias, depending on who the storyteller is. Which is why it is more and more important for us to voice our own opinions, bring our perspectives to light, and contribute to an existing conversation. By telling our own stories, we eventually claim our own identities and contribute to an understanding world. And although this is already happening, we, do not, we have so much more to go in terms of welcoming new stories. So with, the, with these ideas of voices and identities, as well as the future hope of a more informed, more representative society in mind, tonight I would like to uh, propose to you three steps which I think are essential in finding voice and enabling communication. Number one, be informed. What is your primary source of news? What medium do you use? How often do you follow the news? These are all important questions we need to ask ourselves because they help us understand how we look at the world. Are we truly exposing ourselves to a balanced conversation or is there more to explore and find? We need to be able to seek out information to answer these questions and we must be critical in how we take this information. The answers we find will not be the same for everyone but that is where our next two steps come in. Number two, reflect. Now this has been one of the more challenging aspects of all three because reflection entails looking into yourself and admitting to your own errors and devising new plans and strategies. The more you reflect, the more you gain a sense of self-awareness. My personal reflective process entails writing down my thoughts and engaging with them as I do. You might have different approaches, but that doesn't matter. What's important here is that we are always creating conversation within ourselves, always processing information and events and thinking about what they could possibly mean to us. Number three, speak and let's speak. Telling your own stories is an extraordinary achievement, but we must also recognize, welcome, and listen to the stories of others. This will help us facilitate conversation, a flow of ideas that will eventually help us build a common ground. And this is where the idea of telling stories really materializes itself. We would not only be challenging the dominant narrative, but we will also be contributing to an existing conversation. Or we could be creating new conversations. It carries just one example of how we could share stories. She would not only inspire young people to learn about Africa, but she would also teach them to learn so much more, to seek their own truth and question what they see. Ikari will inspire them to tell their stories in a way that they feel is appropriate. Now, you might be, you might be wondering, okay, so there's this whole idea of telling stories and, and children's books, how do we all bring it together? 
in order for you to tell your own stories, you, you first need to be ready and willing to learn about other people's stories. We need to um, always seek information where it is available and keep an open mind to new perspectives. We need to reflect upon our actions, our attitudes, and how we relate to the rest of the world. And lastly, we must listen to the stories of others with the same passion and vigor with which we would tell ours, such that in the end, we can all challenge the dominant narrative and claim our own identities. So yes, I am Muslim, I am black, I am Ethiopian, and I am a woman. I'm also African. But more importantly, I am Hayat Said, an individual who strongly believes in the power of stories and the many ways in which we can appreciate and use our differences in order to thread together our own beautifully crafted quilt made up of each and every one of our identities. Thank you very much.